Hey kids, Mr. Stanley here. Welcome to Children's Church. We're going to get started the way we always get started with a time of prayer requests and praises. So in just a second, I'm going to give you about 15 seconds of silence to say some things out loud. The first thing I want you to say out loud is if there's anything this past week that's made you super excited, that's made you smile, that's made you laugh, I want you to say that out loud and we're going to tell God thank you for those things. Number two, if you know someone in your life who is sick or who's sad or who's hurting for some reason, I want you to say their names out loud and we're going to ask God to take care and to help those people. And then number three, if you have had something in your life that you're struggling with, something in your life that's making you either angry or sad or nervous or scared or frustrated, I want you to say that out loud and we're going to ask God to help you with that thing that you're struggling with. Can we do that? All right, so I want you to say those things out loud. I'm giving you about 15 seconds. That starts right now. All right, great job, kids. I couldn't hear what you said, but God heard each and everything that you mentioned. And we're going to lift those things up to God now in prayer to open Children's Church. So when we pray, we put our hands together, we bow our heads, we close our eyes. Let's go to God now in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this day. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for all the things this past week that have made us smile, that have made us laugh, that have made us excited. We thank you for blessing us with those things. God, for the people in our lives who are sick, or they're sad, or they're hurting, or they need your help right now, God, we pray that you would help them, that you would watch over them, that you would take care of them, and you would give them exactly what they need. And God, for everyone watching who's struggling with something, there's something in their lives that's making them angry or sad or overwhelmed or nervous or frustrated. I pray that you would help them with those things, God, that you would help them to overcome those struggles, God, and you would let them know that you are right there with them as they walk through those struggles. And you will never leave them and you will always love them. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Great job, kids. We open with prayer. And now we always move on to another prayer. But if you've been here before, you know that this prayer has a special name. Anybody know what this prayer is called? Just say it out loud. It's called the Lord's Prayer. You're right. So we always pray this every single Sunday, whether you're here in Children's Church, or you go to the gathering, or you go to traditional worship, or you watch these videos. We always say this prayer together because we believe it's important. Because when Jesus was here on earth, his disciples asked him, Jesus... How should we pray? And Jesus taught them to pray using this prayer. We believe that we're disciples of Jesus. So we try and pray this prayer every single week. So we're going to pray it together now. It starts, Our Father. If you know it, I want you to pray along with me out loud. If you don't know it, that's perfectly okay. As you watch these videos or you come in person to church here at Bluff Park UMC, you're going to hear this prayer over and over and over. And I promise you'll pick it up sooner rather than later. All right, so we're going to pray it together now. So again, put our hands together. Bow our heads, close our eyes. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Great job, kids. Now we move on to our Bible story for the day. And if you've been with us the last few months, you know we've been working our way through the Old Testament. We're doing a series called Heroes of the Old Testament. And the guy we're going to be talking about today is one you may not have heard of as often. We don't do this story as much in the church, but it's a really cool story. And it's about a guy named Gideon. Can you say Gideon? Gideon, all right? And when this story starts, I need to give you a little bit of background information before we get to Gideon. God's people, the Israelites, were living in the promised land, but they had a problem. There was this other group of people who lived outside the promised land who kept coming in and being mean to them and picking on them. These Midianites were their names. Can you say Midianites? 
Midianites. They would come into the promised land randomly at random times. They never knew when they were coming, but they would run into the promised land and they would steal the Israelites' food that they were growing out of the ground, their crops, and they would steal their animals. And then they would run out. And the Israelites couldn't do anything about it because the Midianites had more people in their army and the Israelites were spread out all over the promised land. So they couldn't do anything to stop it. So they turned to the best person they could think of to ask for help. Who do you think they asked for help? They asked God for help. The people began to pray to God and ask God to help them against the Midianites. And God heard their prayers. And God decides to help them through the person we just said his name a minute ago. Remember it? Through Gideon. All right? And so God sends an angel to Gideon. God sends an angel to Gideon, and the angel comes to Gideon and says, Gideon, God has chosen you. God wants you to gather all the people of Israel together, form an army, and go fight the Midianites. And God will be with you, and God will help you defeat the Midianites. And we would think Gideon would say, yes, let's do it, of course. But he's a little nervous. He tells the angel, just to make sure that you're actually an angel from God, and that God really wants me to do this, can I I have a sign? Can I, can I give you a test? And the angel says, okay. And Gideon says, okay, when I go to sleep tonight, I'm going to lay this piece of wool, this piece of cloth down on the ground outside. And when I wake up tomorrow morning, I want that piece of cloth to be soaking wet, but all the ground around it to be completely dry. And Gideon goes to sleep. And Gideon wakes up and it's exactly like he asked. The piece of cloth is soaking wet, but the ground around it is completely dry. And we might think Gideon says, yes, okay, let's do it. But he says, well, just to be sure, just to make sure, can we do one more test? And the angel says, okay. And Gideon says, I'm going to lay a piece of cloth, a different piece of cloth, outside, on the ground. And when I go to sleep at night, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I want this time the cloth to be completely dry when I wake up, but the ground around it to be soaking wet. And the angel says, okay. Gideon goes to sleep, and when he wakes up, it's exactly like he had asked for. The cloth is completely dry, and the ground around it is soaking wet. Gideon says, okay, I'm in. Let's do this. And Gideon calls all, he sends messengers all over the promised land to all the Israelites and said, anyone who wants to fight in an army, Come and meet me here because God has told me to form this army. God has said he's going to be with us. He's going to help us defeat the Midianites. So everyone come that wants to come. Anybody have any idea how many Israelites showed up to fight? You got to guess? It's a pretty big number. 32,000 Israelites show up to fight. And guys, Gideon is feeling good. When he looks at these 32,000, that's a really big number. When he looks at them, he's like, we got this. The Midianites have a bigger army than we do, but we've got 32,000 people, and God is on our side, and God has said he will help us, and Gideon's pumped. But then God does something a little weird that doesn't make a lot of sense to Gideon or probably the 32,000 people, but God comes to Gideon, and God says, Gideon, your army's a little too big. And Gideon's thinking, what? We have 32,000. That's still less than the Midianites, but you're going to be with us. 32 is good. But God says, no, that's too big. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand up in front of all 32,000 people and tell them this. Anyone who is scared, you can go home. No penalties, no nothing. If you're scared, go home. And guys, 22,000 people, 22,000 Israelites leave and go home. So they had, this is for my math people out there. They had 32,000 Israelites, 22,000 Israelites leave. How many Israelites are left? 10,000, guys. 10,000. Still a pretty big number, but a whole lot less than 32,000. And that's what Gideon's thinking. Well, we had 32,000, now we got 10, but 10,000 is still a big number. God has said he's going to be with us. He's going to help us to beat the Midianites. We still got this. He's still feeling all right. He's a little nervous now, but he's still feeling good. But God comes to him a second time. And God says, "Uh, Gideon, you still have too many people. It's too many people. We need to lower your army even more. And so God says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take all 10,000 Israelites that are left, and I want you to send them down to the river. There's a river near where they're at. And he goes, and I want you to watch them while they go to the river. And if they walk to the river and start drinking out of the river like a dog, so basically they go down and lick up the water like a dog would, I want you to send them home. But if they scoop up the water, bring it to their mouth and drink it, I want you to keep those. And guys, 
9,700 Israelites drink like a dog and get sent home. All right, so we had 10,000. Now 9,700 drank like a dog and got sent home. How many are left? My math people? There's only 300 left. 300. They started with 32,000, and they're down to 300 people. And God says, this is your army. And now, guys, now Gideon is nervous. And Gideon has a choice to make. He knows the Midianites have a giant army, and he's got 300 people. He can choose now to trust in God who has told him, I'm going to help you beat them. If you take these 300, I'm going to help you beat them. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to him because it's a small number against a really big number. So he can trust God and do that or he can say, I'm out. That doesn't make much sense. I can't do it. I'm out. What does he choose to do? He trusts God. And God talks to him. They come up with a plan. And Gideon takes these 300 people and he starts to talk to them. And now it's their turn to do something that's going to be hard. Because Gideon gives them his plan for how they're going to defeat the Midianites. And they're probably expecting to be handed swords or spears or shields or something to fight with. Gideon gives each one of the 300 men three weapons. But listen to what these weapons are. He gives them each a torch, a clay pot, and a trumpet. And they're probably looking at Gideon like, what? But Gideon tells them his plan, and it still doesn't make sense. Because they need swords, they need, and now they've got a choice. Do they just say, I'm out, this makes no sense, Gideon. I know God has said he's with us, he's going to help us, but we can't do this. There's only 300 of us, and you don't even give us swords. They have to make a choice. Do they put their faith and trust in God, or do they leave? What do they do? They also decide to put their faith and trust in God, all right? And here's what they do. This is kind of cool. So they go to the Midianite army. They find them. And they go there in the middle of the night when all the people in the Midianite army are fast asleep. So it's probably like one or two in the morning. It's really late at night. They're all asleep. And Gideon tells all 300 of his men to make a circle around their camp, to space out as far as they can. And before they go and do that, they light their torches, but they put their torches in the clay pots. And so the men are carrying their, plate, their clay pots with the torch in it and their trumpet, and they surround the army. Right? And it's pitch black dark. And then all of a sudden Gideon says, now! And they throw the clay plots down. So all of a sudden, boom, there's 300 balls of fire around the camp. And they put their trumpets to their lips and they blow them as hard as they can. And so for the Midianites, they're fast asleep, deep in sleep, pitch black dark. And all of a sudden they hear trumpets 300 trumpets going off all around them, which is super loud. And it wakes them up out of a deep sleep. And it's still dark, and they look around, and there's 300 balls of fire around their camp as well. And guys, they freak out. They start to panic. And it's pitch black dark, except for these balls of light around the camp. They think they're already being attacked. So they get up and start moving. They hear movement. They start fighting the movement. They're actually fighting themselves. They're fighting themselves in the middle of their camp because they think the Israelites are there, but they're really just around. There's only 300. They think there's more of them. So they start fighting themselves, and when they finally realize they're fighting themselves, they freak out, and they run away, and they don't bother the Israelites again. The Israelites defeated the Midianites. God helped them do it with only 300 people. Is that a cool story? Guys, I love that story. I know it's a little bit long. I know it's one you probably haven't heard before, but that's such a cool story. But guys, I want us to think about what can we learn from this story this week, all right? And something we've talked about a lot in the Old Testament as we've been going through these stories is that sometimes God asks people to do things that don't make a lot of sense to them. He asks them to do things that don't make a lot of sense or that they really just don't want to do. All right, we see it in this story. God, Gideon was excited to have 32,000 people, but God whittled it all the way down to 300, which didn't make a lot of sense to Gideon because 300 against a huge army didn't make sense. But God had told him, I'm going to help you defeat him. I'm going to be with you. And Gideon puts his faith and trust in God, and he is able to defeat the Midianites. And for Gideon's 300 people, they probably thought God's going to be with us, but we're only 300 people. 
And instead of giving us swords and shields and spears, you've given us a clay pot, a torch, and a trumpet. But they knew that God had said, I will be with you. If you'll come with me, I will help you defeat the Midianites. So they had to choose. And they put their faith and trust in God. And God helped them defeat the Midianites. Now guys, you're not going to have to fight a big army with a trumpet and a clay pot <laughs> and a torch, right? You're not going to have to do that. But we've talked about this before. There are things that God asks all of us to do. He asks us to do things in the Bible. This big book that we believe God helped write for us, helped teach people how to write the Bible so that it would be a message from him to us. And in that book, he tells us things that he wants us to do. And sometimes, I'm sure you've ran into this, you've either read your Bible or heard Mr. Stanley or another teacher tell you something that didn't make a lot of sense, or it didn't sound like it was going to be fun to do, or it's something you just said, I don't want to do that. I'm thinking things like honor your mother and father, love your enemies. Treat others as better than yourself. And those are just three of lots of things the Bible says that God wants us to do. And those sometimes, for me, and I'm sure for you, those don't make a lot of sense. We don't want to do them sometimes. But guys, when you hit those things, when you read those things, when you hear me or another teacher tell you those things, and you're just like, I don't want to do it, that doesn't make sense. I want to encourage you to try to do those things. Because guys, I've told you this before, I believe that God created you. God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. God wants what's best for you. God knows what's best for you. God wants you to be truly happy. And I believe it's by doing these things that God asks us to do in the Bibles that we will be truly happy. That we'll become the people God has created us to be. And when we do these things, we shine a light for God to people in the world who don't know God. And by us doing the things God asks us to do, they may believe in God. As well. So the next time you read something or Mr. Stanley says something and you look at me like this, like, mm -mm, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound crazy. That, that sounds crazy. I want you to pray about it. And I want you to try and do those things, even if they don't make sense. Even if they don't make sense. Even if you don't really want to do it. I want to encourage you to try and do that the next time you hear. And think about those three that I said. Honor your mother and father. Love your enemies. Treat others as better than yourself. And you'll pick up a whole lot more of those as you come to Children's Church. Can y'all do that for me? Can you try and do that this week? Good job, guys. All right. That's Children's Church for today. We'll continue through the Old Testament next week. I got a good story, story for you. So come back next week and we'll do Children's Church again. But let's close in prayer. Let's put our hands together. Bow our heads. Close our eyes. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this story of Gideon, God. And we thank you what it teaches us about trusting you, even when it seems crazy. <laughs> even when it's not something we want to do, God, we pray you would help us to do it. Because we know you love us. We know you created us. You know what's best for us. You know what's going to make us happy. And you know what's going to make us the people you created us to be. So please help us to follow you, even sometimes when it doesn't make sense, God. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for this day. Please be with each and every person watching Children's Church now. Help them as they go throughout their week. Lead them, guide them, and may they always remember that you are always with them and you will always love them. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you next.